attendance. I'm now recording for all of the people who are uh, going to be watching this recorded. So without further ado, we'll awesome. go ahead and get started. So as I kind of mentioned, the goals for today is we'll talk a little bit about ourselves. We'll go over what we hope to teach you in this course. We'll go over how we're going to do that with uh, lecture and attendance. We'll go over the syllabus. And then, of course, as always, we'll answer questions. So Matt, will you tell us a little bit about what this means? Yeah, so uh, CS196 is for students by students. It is 100% top to bottom student run. Uh, I mentioned this in the info session last night, but we literally have complete leadership structure. So uh, everyone on course staff from uh, Eustace and myself all the way down to project managers are students. Um, usually, or 100% uh, undergrad as well. So we have a lot of people who have been where you've been just a short time ago, only a few semesters ago, sometimes even last semester. So yeah, we just have a bunch of students who are here to help you out. And uh, to talk about that, let's uh, talk about ourselves for a little bit here. Of course. So uh, we'll introduce ourselves now. Um, I'm an electrical engineering uh, student here at UIUC. I plan to graduate uh, somewhere around December 2023. It just depends. Uh, what classes I want to take at that point. Um, I used to work for Visor, uh, which was an esports computer vision company, Tallow, which is kind of a uh, education platform, Country Financial, which is a uh, insurance company and research park at UIUC, and I currently work for the ECE department. Um, my interests are in computer vision and accelerating computer vision uh, with like hardware co-design, I guess, and also, of course, teaching. Um, some fun facts about me is that I'm also the lead CA for the ECE equivalent for this, the 110, 120 honors, um, and I like to ski. You can see a picture of me skiing there uh, this winter. Uh, last time I went skiing, I broke my arm, and I did not break my arm this time, so I'm very happy about that. Awesome. Um, yeah, so I'm Matt. Uh, I am a sophomore in CS plus econ. Uh, that's actually a typo. I'm going to be graduating in May 2023, or at least expect to. Um, and then I, uh, last summer, interned at the Naval Surface Warfare Center in Crane, Indiana. And this next summer, I'm going to be interning at Hollow App, which is a uh, social media startup that uh, is on the uh, West Coast. Uh, some of my interests are app dev, uh, specifically on iOS, and uh, continuous integration, continuous uh, deployment, uh, and then fintech as well, being a CS plus econ major. Um, and then on the side, I'm also the chair of ACM SIG Mobile. And then I, I, in high school, learned how to fly planes and am a licensed private pilot. Matt, you should fly me sometime. Is that a thing you can do? It is a thing I can do. Okay. This will be, this will be, this will be, this is in the plans now. You can't take that back. <laughs> Um, all right, so let's talk a little bit about this class. There's two components to this class, the project and the lecture and the homework. Um, the project is really kind of the heart, the core of this class, and, and that's what you guys want to uh, um, focus on a lot. And so we're going to talk a little bit about, you know, what that actually implies. So, so what is this semester project? So what this is going to mean is, is you're going to be learning to work on a structured, expansive team project. And so what does that kind of mean is you're going to be working in a team of somewhere between four and seven people. You're going to have a project manager, which is a student who's taken this class before. They're going to be knowledgeable in stuff that you know about. And this project is going to solve a ton of stuff. First of all, it's going to be a great thing uh, to boost your resume and to talk with recruiters about because um, all of the projects that CS196 students work on are hugely impressive and um, vast in, in their scale, I would say say. Um, you, can get, you get experience working on something real. Uh, you get experience working on uh, computer science projects remotely, um, thanks to COVID. Um, you get to work in an agile team, uh, which is the industry standard for kind of collaborative uh, management and people working on uh, these large scale product projects or features or companies or whatever it may be together. And then also we're going to make sure that you're using uh, proper version control. And so what that means is we're going to be first teaching you about Git and, and kind of how to use it. Um, that's going to be our lecture tomorrow. And then second, throughout the entire project, you're going to be actually implementing it. So how does the project work? You're going to be working under a project manager, which is one of our staff. 
they're going to guide you and your team to turn the ideas that you have for your project into something tangible. And so this, this project manager is going to have a, a concrete idea of the steps that you need to take in order to get kind of a working prototype. We want to give you as much freedom as possible for your project. And so what that's going to mean is once you you and your team is built, you guys can really decide pretty much anything to do um, within certain very, very loose boundaries. Um, now, you know, the, the, the reason we want to do this is because we know a ton of you have awesome ideas, but sometimes it can be hard to learn where to start. It can sometimes feel like you have to know what to search uh, in order to search it and start learning about it. And so we're here to provide you with that structure and the guidance in order to get started. So some other miscellaneous information is we will be releasing a project interest form uh, sometime later this week, probably Thursday or Friday. Um, what this is going to help us do is pair you with project managers who are interested in something you want to work on. And so big, big picture ideas there are, you know, do you want to work on CS for good, CS for education? Maybe you want to work on something um, that's machine learning focused or data science focused. Maybe you want to build a game or an app, right? These are all going to be options on that form. Once we have those forms, we'll pair you with uh, fellow students and mentors um, based on those interests. And then uh, once the, the project has started getting kicked off, you'll come up with an MVP, a, a minimum viable product. And what that does is it just outlines the, the baseline goals that you're looking to finish this semester um, and, and can outline a, a kind of clear goal for the project. Um, for checkpoints in the project, there's going to be a midterm presentation and also a uh, final presentation. Ooh, is the stream lagging? I hope not. Um, so there'll be a midterm presentation and a final presentation. And what we're looking for there is just to see, you know, are you making progress? Um, you know, are you guys getting some concrete work done? And then for the final, you know, show off what you've made. Projects are going to start on week uh, four. Uh, and so this is the first week. Um, we're going to send more information about that later. But in the meantime, we highly encourage you to think of some ideas. Um, you know, thinking of ideas early is going to be the best way to start working or, or have some ideas for a project that you're really passionate about. So I'll let Matt talk a little bit about the lectures. Yeah, so um, we're going to be kicking off this semester with Bash uh, starting on Thursday. And so Bash is a Unix shell and it's a command language. So it's uh, found on the terminal for Mac OS and also uh, blanking on the name for it. I think it's also the terminal for uh, Linux, um, and it's incredibly powerful. You can use it to run commands, make files, edit files, make directories, do all kinds of different scripting, and it allows you to do a lot more things a lot more quickly with your computer um, from a vast set of things. And basically, if you can do something in Bash, you can make a script that does it for you a thousand times over. So it's an extremely useful language uh, for a programmer to know, and it's also very important for our next uh, topic, which we'll be going into in a couple weeks, which is Git. And so Git is a version control system, and its main purpose is to track project files and uh, not only make collaboration easier, but also to make it easier for yourself to recover files, say, if your hard drive fails, or if you uh, make a change that you end up not wanting to keep, you can revert back to an earlier version and it's all done automatically via the command line. And it's super great because it saves so much time and it allows you to work with others super easily. So you will be using Git in almost every other class that you have in computer science, as well as on your own to share projects and uh, looking beyond your own education at internships and jobs. So Git is a very important uh, skill to learn and that's why we uh, want to teach it so much. So then our next uh, topic is going to be Python. And so Python is a language that is used for a lot of different things. And it's a major tool that allows you to get hands-on experience with some more complex lecture topics that are very hard to approach from a beginner standpoint, um, but are made easier in Python. So that can be anything from ML to web dev. There's all kinds of things that you can do in Python that are made easier um, than if you were to do it in a different language. So Python, we have structured our lectures around developing a website this semester, and that's going to be a really fun part of this semester is because we have the section of um, these lectures where you're going to be building your website from zero to 100% done 
including a database, a backend, all kinds of different things that you will be able to then uh, show off and just have a lot of fun with. So then moving into our next section, um, this will be our final major topic of the semester is Rust. And so Rust is a super new programming language. It's only been around for a few years. Uh, for perspective, uh, languages like Java or C++ are older than uh, Eustis and myself. And Rust, on the other hand, is a really cool language because it's built around a bunch of things that went wrong in other languages, ways to fix other things that could have been better. And as a part of that, um, you get to do a lot of lower level stuff that's very difficult to do, say in C++, but you're doing it much faster than a language like Java or Python because it is a lower level language, but it has a lot more safety than a language like C++, C, or um, any other languages that are lower level. And the really cool thing that we can do with Rust is explore some really complex topics that you only really get to do at a lower um, level course like CS241 um, that include concurrency, ownership, pointers, um, and all of this stuff with memory management. So you get to do a lot of really cool things in Rust that you'd usually have to wait until your sophomore year or later to uh, do. Of course, yeah. I think one, one thing I always like to also bring up with Rust is uh, it, it's from the Stack Overflow surveys of the most loved programming language has uh, over the past two years, since it's so new, has been voted the most loved programming language by those who use it. Um, so, you know, the people who learn Rust really, really love to use it because it does kind of, um, since it's such a newer language, solve a lot of the problems, I'll say, with, with some of the older languages. So we'll talk now a little bit about uh, content delivery and attendance. And so, um, as you can see uh, right now, we stream our lectures live on Tuesdays and Thursdays at 7 p.m. Central Time. Um, we really recommend that you attend lectures live because there's a lot of value in kind of being here live and being able to ask questions. Um, but if you can't, don't tune in at 4 a.m. Please go to sleep. We understand that people are in different time zones. Um, what we do in terms of uh, tracking attendance is for the live lecture, we have our very own Discord bot, which we'll be using pretty soon here. Um, that will log your reactions, and then we'll be able to use that for attendance. Um, alternatively, if you miss the poll during lecture, or if you're watching this recorded, we'll also have a Prairie to Learn quiz. And on that Prairie to Learn quiz will be the same questions that we asked in lecture. And we just ask that you fill that out, um, and, and uh, so that way we can track uh, everyone who's been watching the lectures and don't worry you know we, we do count attendance attendance will be counted either synchronously or asynchronously um, you only need to do one um, but the kind of reason for that is because we know that the lecture is very important and we want to make sure it's worth your while and so we we're, we will make sure it's worth your while so we'll talk a little bit about the syllabus. The syllabus can be found on the CS196 website. Um, the CS196 website is uh, a place where you can find a ton of stuff for this class. Uh, all of the recorded lectures will be put on the 196 website as well as the slides for the lectures. Um, additionally, the recorded lectures will be posted to YouTube. And I think they're also archived here on Twitch, but only for about two weeks. So if you're uh, really behind, I wouldn't count on that. Um, or if you're reviewing, I would say. Um, but a lot of uh, more administrative stuff can be found on the website, including the syllabus. So I highly recommend you take a peek at that syllabus. It's going to go over all of this and more. Um, if you ever need to you know, refer to something, refer to the syllabus. So are there any prerequisites to this course? No, there's not. And we really want to emphasize this. You, you do not need any prior programming experience. This does not assume um, you know, that you've been a professional programmer for a ton of years. This is a beginner level course. Uh, that being said, you know, we are going to guide you towards a ton of stuff kind of from the ground up, right? Starting with Bash and then Git. We'll move into Python after that. Um, it'll be paced uh, similarly to CS 125. Um, so a lot of the stuff that you'll be learning in 125, you'll then use in this class uh, a little bit afterwards. Um, that being said, you know, if you do have a ton of experience, this class is also great for you. And the reason for that is, you know, it's, it's a little bit self-guided, right? If you want to make something to kind of push your limits in the project, then uh, this is a great opportunity. And so what we're going to do here is we're going to uh, test out our poll bot that we made. Um, and this will count for the, uh, the credit 
for this class. So if you guys see in lecture questions channel in Discord, you can see our poll bot has posted that. And so these are the options, and there are four instead of five. So let me fix that. That's a user error, not a bot error. Hey, <laughs> Matt, you want to? Actually, I got yeah. it. Yeah. OK. OK, here we go. Nice. So uh, if you guys can react to that second post, um, just with your experience levels, you can see the different levels of it here. Um, I guess I labeled it A through E, but it's actually one through five. But I'm sure you guys can uh, find that one to one. Um, so how this works is these will all get stored for us and then we'll use your net IDs um, from your names in order to kind of track attendance. Now that's a great time to bring up. If you haven't changed your nickname in Discord yet to be the correct format, um, please do so now. Uh, right click on your name either on the right side uh, it does get taken away after you react so um, don't worry it does get stored yeah this is the first time we've used this bot tim there in chat uh, is the one who actually made it for <laughs> us so um, this is a little bit of a stress test for us but uh it's good that we're we're walking through the user experience with you all yeah it is a feature it is a feature i promise <laughs> um yeah so this is the first time we've used it. We're expecting <laughs> great things. Yeah. So somebody asked, uh, should you answer in general? No. So I just linked uh, the hashtag lecture questions on the left-hand side there. That's where this will be. And it's slowly getting buried here um, by the chat. But um, a little bit up there is the uh, poll. And you'll see like there's a little bit of the... Uh, like there's the logo and it'll say 196 pull bot. Anthony, your, your, your first name's totally fine. Uh, it's just kind of what you want to be called. Um, I, I assume, uh, you want to be called Anthony. Um, but yeah, make sure that, uh, you know, really importantly that your net ID is in there. That is how we're going to be tracking attendance through this bot. So, uh, make sure that that's there but no it's actually great that you guys are spamming it. It's a great stress test for the bot, <laughs> uh, seeing if it goes down or anything. Now, of course, if you're watching this recorded right now, uh, the Prairie Learn quiz should be up. It'll have this same exact question. Um, don't worry about, we're, we're having some interesting, it's hard on Prairie Learn to make questions that don't uh, matter, if that makes sense. And so don't worry too much, uh, as long as you submit the Prairie Learn uh, question, even if it says you only got, you know, zero or 20%, you, you're getting uh, credit for attendance. So don't worry too much about that. But yeah, so it, again, uh, I will also mention that it, you know if you react to do it here, you won't need to use the Prairie Learn. If you use the Prairie Learn, you don't have to do it here, though that would be uh, impossible because you went back in time. <laughs> but only one is necessary to get attendance. Yeah, and we usually ask the same questions. Sometimes we'll uh, switch them up, but for the most part, they'll be the same questions or some very minor change on those questions. Um, and the only difference really is that uh, sometimes Prairie Learn will do a uh, like fill in the blank, whereas uh, with the poll bot, we can only do the uh, multiple choice. Yeah. Is the Prairie Learn up right now? I think it opens at eight. Yeah, it should be. Or it opens now. Uh, I think I set it to open at seven. Let me double check right now. So yeah, it should be open now. Yeah. It should um, be. It's That's a great question. yeah. You might have to we'll add it to, to your through. like courses by clicking the add and remove yeah. but yeah um so we'll we'll move on from this i feel like everyone's uh pretty much good reacting to that message so how do we do grading so one thing that we want to prioritize is um don't worry too much about your grade in the class as long as we know that you're putting an effort into your project into the lectures and the homeworks um we do grade very generously there's a ton of opportunities for extra credit um but this is how it's split up and so lecture attendance is going to be 10% of your grade. Uh, the project uh, in all of the sprints are going to be worth 65% of your grade. Um, and we'll go down how that's broken up in a bit. Uh, the homework is going to be worth 25% of your grade. And then we're going to have a ton, a ton of different opportunities for you guys to get extra credit throughout the semester. And so that's also going to be 10%. And so does that mean that you can get 110% in this class? You can. Uh, and we encourage you to strive for that. But, uh, you know, what, what we kind of want to go at here is that there's going to be a ton of opportunities to get extra credit. Hey, Matt, do you want to take a peek at the Prairie Learn? Make sure that that's uh, good to go. 
Yeah, sure. Let me double okay. check that. So Matt will be taking a Otherwise peek at the Prairie I'll, Learn, uh, and in the meantime, I'll talk yeah. about how the projects here are going to be graded. So again, the projects are worth 65% of your total grade, and this is how that's split up. So a big part of that is the sprints. And so the sprints are these week-long or bi-weekly um, tasks that you guys are going to work on for the projects. And so each of the sprints, yeah, Matt's going to be working on uh, getting the Prairie Learn set up. Uh, I just fixed it. I uh, I may or may not have used 2020 instead of 2021 <laughs> on the access dates. So now we're good to go. <laughs> Great. So everyone should, uh, you should be able to refresh. We'll have a little bit of time later to, to get the Prairie Learn pulled up if you want to wait until then, or you can do it now, either one. So this is how the project grades are going to be split. Um, Matt, how about you talk a little bit about this? Uh, yeah, sure. So the project grade is split into two parts. There's the um, like the sprints, which is on a two-week basis. So you'll do multiple sprints throughout the semester. And each of those sprints is basically a small chunk of your project that you're going to be working on. And so uh, within there, there's a little bit of a different criteria that we'll talk about in a moment. But um, in terms of the rest of the project, 10% um, is your code base quality. That's basically, did you accomplish what you set out to do? Um, does your code actually run? Um, does it look good? Um, or not does it look good, but like, does the code um, work well? And did you come up with the product that you said you wanted to build? That's essentially what the code base quality is. Um, and then the presentation attendance, uh, we have a midterm presentation halfway through the semester. That is basically going to be a uh, lecture where everyone gets to go on the Discord and we'll have this nice big meeting room where everyone will be able to screen share and talk about what their project is and how far they are and all of these different cool little aspects about what they're building. And once our one that is finished, everyone who showed up and treated every other group with respect will get a free 5% essentially. So as long as you show up to that and like present, you're good to go there unless you're an international student and then we'll set up something to sort of accommodate with the time zone because obviously it's not the best time zone for everyone. Yeah. Um, so let's talk about, program. right. That's, that's pretty much the goal of 196 COVID edition is don't stay up until 4 a.m. Um, but let's talk about sprint grading because I said I would talk about it. So. We have five sections and basically it gets split into whether it's an individual thing or a team thing. So the individual stuff is project participation. That's, did you show up to your meetings? Did you contribute to the big picture decisions? Did you respond to messages in your group's discord? And were you basically just there and present when you were working on this project? The second part is version control and workflow. When we talk about Git, we're gonna talk about how you should be using Git properly. Because yes, there is a difference. You can use Git, but that doesn't mean you're doing it right. It's like driving a car. You can drive a car all over the road you want. That doesn't mean you're driving it right. So that's the second part, and that's worth 20%. Then uh, the task completion for yourself is worth 15%. And that's basically just, did you complete the task that you said you would do at the start of the sprint or that your PM assigned you? And a part of that, we know it's a crazy semester and everything. A part of it is, did you make a good faith effort? Did you try to complete it? So even if you ran into something that you didn't know was going to be able to happen, it's how hard you tried as opposed to whether or not you did. It's not binary. It's a judgment call based on a number of factors. And then part of that uh, above bullet point is, did you seek help when you needed it? Did you reach out to your PM? Did you reach out to somebody else who might know what's going on? Those kinds of troubleshooting steps. And then in terms of your team, uh, we have two more parts. Team communication, it's basically the project participation except within your Discord and is everyone communicating and are you talking with each other and making sure that everyone's getting stuff done. And then the task completion, this is the biggest part and you'll notice it's actually triple the task completion for yourself is did your entire team complete the sprint? Because we don't want you to just say, oh, I'm done. I'm finished with what I needed to do. I'm going to check out for the next week and a half. I'll see you guys then, right? We want you to be working with your team. And as a part of that, we want you to be helping the rest of your team finish the sprint um, on time. So that is why it's triple the amount of percent for each sprint is because we want you to not check out 
once you finish your part, we want you to help everyone else make sure that they finish their parts as well, because you are all a team and you should be working collaboratively together and your PM should help you sort of build that community. Yeah, absolutely. So, so again, you know, these sprints are part of the, the project grading for this. Um, and, and these really are here to make sure that, you know, you guys are, are making something great and also follow, following industry standards, as we kind of mentioned. Um, if you ever are having trouble with the homework or, you know, working on the project and have a question, we will always be hosting office hours. Um, we have many PMs who are excited to help you on whatever uh, help you may need. And so there's going to be two kind of sets uh, for the office hours. First, the homework related help. Uh, this is going to be on Prairie or Campus Wire um, pretty soon. We'll release the schedule for this. And then for the project-related help, uh, we'll release kind of a list of the staff's specialties. Um, and for that, you can kind of reach out to someone who may be knowledgeable about the thing that you're working in, reach out to them and say, hey, you know, could you tell me a little bit about, you know, computer vision, full stack, front end, you know, whatever it may be that you're working on. So speaking of the Campus Wire, yeah. um, this is the join link. Uh, you guys can find this in the Discord in the resources channel. And then Matt, will you also post this in Twitch chat for everyone? Yep, I will work on that right now. Um, the code once you join yeah, is 3186. Uh, we highly, highly encourage you to use Campus Wire. Um, it's, it, it is the easiest way for us to kind of answer you guys' questions and to help you on the homeworks and everything in between. So I'm going to give everyone a little bit of time to uh, get into Campus Wire and get this link. Again, this information is all on the resources channel as well. So. Uh, we're going to try to limit how many emails we send. Most of the communication between you and us will be sent through Discord. Um, that being said, we do send some emails earlier in the semester just to make sure that everyone who might have registered for the class but not come to any of the info sessions and not join the Discord uh, is able to join the Discord. Um, because, again, we want to make sure that that's kind of the, the main way of communication between us and you is the Discord. Good question. Yeah, and to add on to that, um, the announcements channel, it's all the way at the top of the text channels. Make sure that you have your notifications set up for that. Um, everything that we're going to post in there is going to be important. So it'll either be uh, due dates for homeworks, when they're released, or when we're going live on, uh, on Twitch and all of these different announcements. So make sure that you have your notifications set up for that because every single thing that we post in there, we make sure that we want every student to know and it's there for a reason yeah absolutely i've seen a lot of people have joined the discord as well that's great to see um, make sure you are changing your nicknames um, to be the correct format so the first part is kind of your first name or really whatever you want to be called and then your net id in parentheses after that that just makes sure that we can track uh, attendance through our bot Great. Um, and so additionally, you know, we mentioned homework and homework grades. Uh, these are mostly going to be done through the, the Prairie Learn. There will be some ex exceptions to more Git based stuff because we want to make sure that you're actually using GitHub for when you're learning about Git and GitHub. And so um, I encourage you all to sign up for the Prairie Learn as well. It should be open under CS196. So take a little bit yeah, of time. And to it's do that. Going yeah, and it, uh, I posted the uh, link in the Twitch chat. I'll also post it in the Discord right now. Um, and so one thing to note with that is that it is the spring 2021 section. I don't know if anyone can see anything else, but I can. So just a heads up, make sure you're signing up for the spring 2021 section. And of course, all the homeworks on the Prairie Learn are made by our wonderful, wonderful homework team.
yeah, they really do great stuff, especially on the short notice that we've been giving them this week. So yeah. give a shout out to them, clap emojis or something in Twitch chat, show some appreciation for course staff. So again, I'll just wait here for a bit, make sure everyone's uh, joining the Prairie Learn and the uh, Campus Wire. Um, again, though, both of these links, the codes, you know, pretty much everything you need is in the resources channel. Um, additionally, if you're already in the, the Prairie or the Campus Wire, uh, you'll be able to see my first post, uh, which kind of goes over a lot of these links as well. Great. Loved seeing appreciation for the homework staff. You guys are killer. And the rest of the staff website, social, uh, grading, all of them. They, they are the lifeblood of this class. Okay, um, so we've talked about a lot of wonderful things like grading and, and what we're gonna be teaching and stuff like that. Uh, so, so what's the catch, right? So, um, well, the, this class, as we kind of mentioned in the info session, is a generally a little bit higher than your average one credit hour course time commitment, right? Um, when we estimate it, we put it at kind of four and a half to seven hours a week. I'd say your average week is going to be a lot closer to the four and a half, but it does depend, right? If you procrastinate a lot of your work for the, the you know, homeworks and the projects, uh, yeah, there's a chance that it can get a little bit closer to seven hours, I would say. Um, that being said, again, we kind of mentioned before, we grade very generously. We don't want you to have to worry too much about uh, your GPA and your grade in the class. We really, really, really want you to focus on learning about the class and uh, getting a lot of value out of the lecture content and especially out of your project. So um, don't worry too, too much about this part, um, but yeah, keep that in mind. Um, and so I'm going to sit here for a second because this is uh, kind of uh, your guide, for lack of a better term, on how you guys are going to be interacting with us uh, in this class. And so if you have uh, technical homework or course questions logistically, Campus Wire is the place to go. We're going to be looking at that a lot. All of our PMs are going to be looking at that a lot. Um, we're hoping uh, to, to make sure that we're keeping our response times there very, very low. And so you'll be able to get some really great and fast answers to any of the questions you have there. Um, again, try not to post too specific code um, if you're posting questions publicly. Obviously, if you're posting questions privately to staff, then, you know, we can maybe help you out a little bit more specifically. But, you know, we really don't want you to be posting solutions to the homeworks um, in public uh, campus wire because then you are taking away others' opportunity to learn how to do it, right? If you're discussing with your group or talking, you know, to me during these lectures, whether you have a question or you're just chatting in Twitch chat, um, the Discord is the place to be. Um, as well as most of the announcements in this class, Discord is, uh, we call it our, our informal home for this class, right? And so most of the communication between us and you is going to be through the Discord, um, unless you count lecture, I yeah. guess. And to add on to that, um, in general, the way that we break down break down the uh, Twit or the Discord when we're streaming is going to be that lecture questions are more for uh, back and forth technical questions, some sort of question about what we're actually lecturing on. Whereas the Twitch chat is more of a space where you can uh, talk to everyone else and sort of just have a little bit of a more friendly environment, and you can talk to other students as well. But we want to make sure that that uh, definition is clear because it's harder for us to look through all the questions when there's a bunch of other chats happening at the same time. Of course, yeah. And, you know, the, the a big part of this class is also kind of the social aspect, meeting your fellow classmates. All of that is going to be run through uh, Discord as well. Um, we've gotten great feedback in the past about uh, social hours. Um, and so we're going to we have this. Uh, semester we have a new social team and so they're going to be hosting these social events for all of you to meet each other we'll announce of course when all of those are happening i think generally we're going to follow the structure of them happening uh right after lecture um, we will not be having any uh this week i believe just because it's it's syllabus week you guys are all getting acquainted and whatnot so we don't want to overload you with too much but those are a great time i highly encourage you guys to come to them uh in terms of live lectures obviously we're here on Twitch. You can see us. So, oh yeah, not get number one. Bash number one. My bad. Too much, uh, too much get talk. 
Um, obviously, <laughs> you can see us here on Twitch. We stream Tuesdays, Thursdays, 7 p.m. CST. Um, this is your lecture. Um, obviously, you do not have to come here live, especially if it is at a uh, ungodly hour for you. Please do not stay up until 4 a.m. to watch our lectures. Um, they are recorded. You get full credit attendance if you finish the Prairie Learn quiz, if you do, if you watch the recording instead. So um, please uh, get sleep. <laughs> please um in terms yeah, of recorded <laughs> yeah in terms of recorded lectures um they are archived after the stream on twitch for i think about two weeks um the reason why i'm being a little iffy about that is because they do uh in fact go away eventually and so if you're ever reviewing um you can't always rely on them being there now you can always rely on them being on the youtube where i'll be uploading them as well as on the website where we'll be linking to the uploads on the youtube um, additionally, on the website, we'll be posting all of the slides for the lectures, so you guys can find all of this there. We really want to make sure that if you're not able to come to the lectures in person, that you have all of the tools you need to still succeed, because uh, obviously this, this semester is uh, interesting, I'll say. COVID has thrown a wrench in many course delivery plans. Speaking of, let's talk about the next slide. So in years past, we... I uh, used to have a fantastic time where during the opening lecture for every semester, we would have people, we would pass out pieces of paper and we would have everyone write down on that piece of paper what they wanted to do this semester, what they wanted to build in their project, or maybe something they wanted to learn about and give us a bunch of suggestions. And sometimes we try to fit those into lecture topics or we make sure to try and set up project groups if there's a popular enough idea. So with that being said, obviously we're not in a lecture hall. We can't telepathically give you a piece of paper. So unfortunately we can't do that. The good news is we have an alternative. And that is that we made a special emoji of a paper airplane just for our Discord. So use the paper. So if you press colon and then type paper, you'll see the emoji. And feel free to start sending them in Twitch chat or in spamming them in Twitch chat. If you want to use them in the lecture questions area, please add some of your suggestions, stuff that you want us to talk about this semester and just what you want to uh, learn and yeah, what you're absolutely. excited for. Yeah, let us know, you know, is there anything that you're excited to learn about in this class? Is there anything you want to learn about in this class? Do you have any cool project ideas? All of that. If you're watching this recorded, I encourage you still to go to these channels and do that. We'll still see them, um, albeit maybe a couple hours later. Um, but yeah, let us know. Talk about it. Yeah, Frank, you're finding some of the emojis. That's a good one. I forgot about that one. Yeah, that one was a good one. <laughs> I'm trying to remember what I was so concerned about. I can't remember. I don't remember either. I think it was but yeah, that food that, related. That was... I think it was like someone was like eating, you know, like something like ketchup on lettuce or something. Something just truly. Yeah, it was really something. But uh, yeah, that is an example of an emoji that we took at one of the social hours. So last semester, I was the homework lead and. Uh, during the social hours, I made a bit of a habit of screenshotting random things that people did or stuff like that, uh, like Eustace putting on the hat just like he did, and uh, <laughs> turned them into emojis. And we're going to keep that up this semester. I might let the social team take the reins on the emojis, but the point is we like to have a little bit of fun too. This isn't just a 100% serious class. We do want it to be a social experience too because you are freshmen, and especially this year it's just been kind of weird for freshmen so we're trying our best to make it a little bit different to help freshmen meet other freshmen of course yeah we we want this to be a a great great experience for you all as well a lot of paper airplanes i'm happy but yeah don't be afraid talk a little bit about uh stuff you may be excited and no tim <laughs> should you buy emojis don't buy emojis no money. Don't give us. There are no money. emojis to buy. But yeah, if you guys have any, you know, stuff you're excited about, you know, we'd love to hear it. Um, you know, any project ideas I think are also great to talk about. Um, we'll hang out here for a sec. Please don't buy emojis. <laughs> I know. Can they subs? We, I know we're partnered, but I don't think they can subscribe, right? No, I don't think we turned that on. Yeah, no. So we don't have that turned on, and then 
I mean, the Discord emojis, only staff can add them, so yeah, maybe. that's going to be a no. <laughs> Subscribe. No, actually, I'm not even going to make that joke. <laughs> Someone will do it if I make the joke, so. So somebody asked uh, if we sent out any emails. We tried to. We tried using mass mail. It didn't work well. Uh, um, we really do try to stick to Discord because we know that's 100% working. But uh, the mass mail system we've tried and we're going to continue to try just to make sure that we do everything we can. Um, and we'll also take a look at the roster and just send out emails if mass mail keeps failing us. I'm out of boosts. I would have boosted the server, but I'm apparently already boosting something else. Yeah, you're boosting last semester's server. <laughs> <laughs> Wait like a month, and I'll boost the server. You guys don't even have to worry about it, all right? This course staff has got you. Um, it'll be all the emojis you can ever ever imagine. Okay, um, so that's kind of the the major points for the syllabus lecture. So we're gonna spend these last uh, what 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 do we have eight or so minutes? Um, just kind of talking to you guys, asking you any questions. Again, if you have any project ideas, um, this is kind of a great time to you know discuss some of them. We'll talk about you know ways you might go about doing that. Good ideas, bad ideas. Though there are no bad ideas. Um, but yeah, uh, you know, we're kind of just here to hang out. It is the syllabus lecture. So yeah, so yeah, I think Matt kind of mentioned this with the emails. Um, we sent out a mass mail. Uh, it only sent to like a third of the students for some reason. So we're not going to rely on that. But uh, we're going to send out another one maybe this Thursday or so just to make sure everyone's in the Discord and is set up. Uh, but uh, you don't need to receive the mass mails, especially if you're in the Discord already. The only bad idea, that's true, yeah. Maybe someone's semester-long yeah. project can be uh, reinventing Discord, but allowing only us to have infinite <laughs> emojis. I mean, I don't think we hit the cap last semester. Like, we had, actually, let me check. We did not hit the cap at all. We had, I stand corrected, we hit the cap if we uh, hadn't boosted the server. We got 61 uh, emojis last semester, so nice. we did get a lot of emojis. Yeah, if you guys ever have good emojis, let us know. Just screen cap Matt and I in the middle of us talking. Good luck. That is how the uh, emojis got born last semester, aside from the paper airplane one. But yeah, um, thank you all for coming to this first meeting. Uh, again, if you uh, were able to fill out that poll for the attendance earlier, um, just by reacting to that post, let us know. Um, I think we're probably, <laughs> I think we're probably, yeah, please do not buy Discord Nitro. I'm not kidding. Do not do it. Um, we're probably going to make a separate channel for that in the future so that you guys can keep chatting without it getting uh, blasted up into uh, who knows where. Um, but if you weren't able to react to that, no worries. Uh, go to the Prairie Learn. It should open uh, at 8 o'clock uh, after this lecture, um, CST. And you can just fill out the same poll there. Uh, actually, I think it is already open. I think it opens at 7. But you only have to yeah, do one. Um, I can change it. Yeah, either one is, is enough. No, you can keep it open. It's fine. Um, either okay. one's enough for you to get uh, lecture attendance, but we do just want uh, to familiarize you guys with uh, how we're going to be doing attendance, which is to say reacting to that post or, um, yeah, it's open. Yeah, or going to the Prairie Learn. Yeah, it's open. It there. But yeah, welcome to the course. Um, come next this Thursday, we're going to be talking about Bash 1, and so that'll be kind of the language of uh, the command line, and, and we'll learn about some of the basic stuff there very exciting yeah and then only a week after that we start talking about git that's going to be even more exciting in my opinion but i'm biased Matt likes <laughs> git. i respect yeah, I it do but like i don't git. like git <laughs> that's fair it's either a love hate or right in the middle kind yeah. of thing yeah 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 Gets great. I mean, it, it is uh, nothing else does get better than Git. That's what I have to say. That is one way to put it. <laughs> is it okay if I answer the Prairie Learn questions late? Absolutely. It is totally fine. The Prairie Learn questions are if you're watching the lectures asynchronously. And so you can answer those anytime before next lecture. Yeah. Uh, again, yeah, if so you guys. The... Go ahead. Go ahead. 
Oh, uh, the prairie worm questions, uh, they close right as we start uh, talking about the next one. So they close at like 6.59 um, before the, the next lecture. So just any time before then, um, you're good to answer them. And yeah. the reason we do that is just because we want you to uh, have watched the previous lecture before we talk about the next one, just so that you're aware of what you're getting into with the next one. Absolutely, yeah. But yeah, no, no, no pressure on the uh, answering the Prairie Learns on time. They are focused around people being async. So, um, again, to anyone else joining the server, make please, please, please make sure that your name is in the right format. Uh, so name and then net ID in parentheses after that. Next lecture is on Tuesday. No, it's on Thursday. Did someone say Tuesday? They meant Thursday. We lecture Tuesday, Thursday yeah. at 7 p.m. CST. Um, having your name in the correct format means that when you react to the poll bots poll uh, to get attendance, that you'll actually get attendance. When do the project's homeworks and assignments start? Great question. Homeworks, uh, the first homework will start this Thursday. It'll be bash one. The projects start in the fourth week, and then assignments are homework, basically, slash projects. Yeah. There's, I, or there's the only other no thing assignments is... or it's those, so I don't know what you want to call them. Yeah. Yeah, the assignment is the homework, and then uh, the uh, like. The only other thing is the prayer room questions. If you don't watch the lecture live with us, yeah. But yeah, Bash One will be opening uh, this Thursday, uh, right after we teach you Bash, or at least Bash Part One. Yeah, there's multiple parts to Bash because it's so wonderful. We only scratch the surface with Bash. We could go probably three, four lectures with it. Oh, you, I mean, once you start talking about all the magical things you can do with, you know, like grep and whatever, I mean, whew, there's just no limit. <laughs> there's no limit. You can keep talking about Bash forever. Not sure yeah. you want to, but you could. Um, but yeah, uh, once you guys have I've kind of, you know, made sure that you have attendance um, is kind of the most important thing, then uh, you can go ahead and head off. Um, we'll end this lecture three minutes early, I guess. Uh, Matt and I will still be here until uh, 7.50. Um, just answering any questions that you guys may have. Um, welcome to CS196. Uh, we're super excited to teach you this upcoming semester. We have a ton of really, really awesome projects, uh, or homeworks and lectures lined up, and uh, hopefully you're going to come out of this uh, course not only with wonderful project experience, but also with um, a, a website under your belt. How do you make sure that you have attendance? If you reacted to the post uh, in uh, Twitter or lecture questions uh, by our poll bot, or if you filled out the Prairie Learn, uh, what is it called, Matt? Uh, attendance zero. questions. Yeah, attendance zero. Uh, yeah. Yeah, something like that. Um, and it, it'll say you have 20% or whatever. That's just because Prairie Learn doesn't like uh, asking questions that don't matter, essentially. Um, as long as you submit it, you get full credit for uh, attendance. And then realistically speaking, people are still trickling in. Uh, and so um, we'll probably give people attendance for this lecture regardless. Um, though we do want to make sure that uh, those two methods are adequate for people marking attendance. So please do. Yeah, and this one's going to be practice. So that way you know how to do it for the future ones just in, uh, in case. Yeah, we just want to make sure everyone's getting acquainted to it. But yeah, welcome. Welcome to the course, everyone. I yeah, hope you're really excited, excited to have you. Us. Where's attendance zero? Uh, it's attendance one. I lied. <laughs> it's yeah, it's zero. lecture attendance zero. space dash space one slash two six. So lecture attendance for 126. And that's how the uh, format will go is it'll be attendance and then the number of whatever lecture we're on. And then it will be lecture attendance for whatever the date is. No worries, Jack. Um, we, we're, we're here to answer questions. So, uh, you know, we, we, we're happy to help. Okay, well, it is about 10.50. Um, if you guys do have any more questions, ask us in the Discord. We have a ton of staff and ourselves happy to help you guys. Uh, so uh, until then, uh, we'll see you all Thursday, 7 p.m. CST for our very first lecture. We'll be learning about Bash 1. The homework for Bash 1 will open after that lecture. If you didn't react to the poll bot, uh, then make sure that you fill out the attendance form that we've been talking about. Um, but until then, that is, that's everything for this class over the next couple days. And so uh, 
thank you all for coming by and I'll see you around.